Welcome back to the Upper Tier Podcast, the football podcast we bring you each and every week on the Dynamo Podcast Network. Head over to YouTube, smash that subscribe and bell notification button. Audio versions of the show are available on Anchor. And if you'd like to contact the show, you'll find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you'd like to appear on the show or a topic you'd like us to discuss, you can PM or DM us there. Joining me today, my partner from the Transfer Show and a regular on our Monday Mashup flagship show, Dean. Dean, how you doing, my man? Corner taken quickly. Right, Love it. Well, you can no, guess. No, you can guess by that intro. Today, we're going to have a look back at that famous night at Anfield, the four 0 win against Barcelona, the turnaround from a three 0 hair standing up on the arms. Not too confident going into it. But neither the less, we'd be remiss running a podcast if we didn't enshrine that night in an episode, especially on its anniversary. Um, let's take a quick look back. I mean, we have to set the scene here. It's like a movie, the Rocky Balboa story of football. Um, we have to set the scene that it's like we went into the first leg, played really, really well, um, got nothing for our hard work. Um, looked like we had got Tom Trey nil. Um, that free kick from Messi, what a free kick without a shadow of a deal. I suppose we also have to mention Suarez scoring and celebrating. What what was your memories of that first leg? It could have been worse, you know. Dembele, if he scores that chance to make a 4 nil, um, it really was game over. Like let let's be real. When that final whistle went that and it was 3 0 at the end of the first leg, I think we all just died inside. We were all demoralized. But we get on to the we get on to the second leg soon. But um the the first leg we were just chatting before we went live. We we I don't think we could have played any well obviously if, the only way we could have played better was if we if we got some out of the game. But to lose 3 0 as we're saying to like that wasn't a flattering scoreline to Barcelona whatsoever. Like it was no in no way, shape, or form was that a 3 0 game. We man for man, like we were equal. It was just a case of the, the, the free kick. No, you could have put four goalkeepers in the net. They weren't saving it. Um yeah. They they just took their chances. We didn't, as I said, like, we, we we played really, really well. Like, even now, two years later. As we're saying to yesterday, you're watching the the snippets of BT put out a video and they showed uh, Van Virgil, Origi, and Trent talking about it. And even they're saying, like, coming off the pitch, it was more so a case of the fact that they played so well and lost 3-0. It wasn't a case of they played bad and lost 3-0. I think that kind of, when we listened to them, the manager and the players after the game, and they talked about how no one could understand how we finished 3-0 to Barcelona. That's co- kind of what made us all think because I, I don't think there's any Liverpool fans that thought after that game that we were going through. I think everybody had given up hope and it was more the demoralising fact of we played so well and got we, we didn't even get an away goal. It was just one of those crazy nights. They go with you sometimes, but that night it just really, really went against us. Yeah, I remember watching it. I was watching it with Ben, my son, who... Most people on the podcast they say was now was an avid Liverpool supporter, like father, like son. I remember watching that match that night, and I remember saying to him, first of all, I said, if Luis Suarez scores, I can guarantee you he'll celebrate. And he, and he did, because I said, those South American players, that's just the way they are. They're fired up, they're hot blooded, they're going to celebrate and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And then I remember then Messi got that sort of, that sort of goal. Um, and it was just kind of weird the way he got it. And then I remember the free kick and that, that, that sublime free kick right into the top corner was just, it's as good a free kick as you'll see in world football anywhere. And I was just thinking at 3-0, I was thinking, God, we're, we're dead and buried. But I was thinking if we could just, I remember saying to Ben on the night all through the game, if we can just get one goal, just take one goal home with us and make a 3-1 even. And then when I seen Dembele miss, I was going, thank God for that. Like, um, But we really, in theory, we really needed that away goal, didn't we, to, to give us some sort of chance. Because I remember Ben, once the free kick went in, I think he walked out of the room, he was dead and buried. He says, well, that's that. 
Um, so I remember, I remember saying to him after the match, and he quotes me to this day on it. I said to him, I said, look, we'll go back to Anfield under the lights. They're always special nights and special occasions. And I said, if we get an early goal, I said, anything can happen. But I said, we're probably going to need four, you know, and maybe more because I would expect Barcelona to get a goal. Yeah, at least yeah. one. Hundred percent. Yeah, just going, just going back to the <clears throat> the messy free kick. Like Liverpool is Air Force love. You know, we we've travelled over uh, together ourselves. Ben has Ben has come with us. Um, but, but I think everybody, unless you're you're one of these real European football enthusiasts, everybody appreciates the greatness of Lionel Messi. And we've seen him score those free kicks. We've seen him score goals that there's no superlatives to describe it. But when he does it against yourself, I was when I went in, I just I was just sitting there and I, I just switched off from the game altogether. And I was like, that's it, it's done. But then I just took a took a moment to myself and I I, I actually in front of me dad just went like no one of those just sarcastic yeah. claps and I was yeah. like you, you can't, as much as you want to scream at the telly about how much of a beat he is, but you can't help but appreciate Great, something like that. Greatness, if that, greatness. If that, if that had been against Real Madrid or that had been against Man United, we probably would have celebrated like he'd scored that goal for Liverpool, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, what you were saying about about you and Ben, look, I remember texting Darren Cullen, Darren's been on was a couple of times, I remember texting Darren Cullen and I was like, there's no hope of this. There's literally no hope of this. And he was like, usually you have that kind of enthusiasm in Liverpool, so you have that like seed of belief. But we we just we we all that week in the build up to the second leg, we were texting each other like, it's it's not going to, like what's the point in even thinking of it happening? It's like <clears throat> we said to ourselves, if we won two 0 or two one. And even though we get knocked out, just to beat them because they'd rested their whole team the previous weekend because they'd already won the league, um, and that was like we were missing Salah, we were missing Bobby, um, Shakiri and Origi came in, Robbo got injured early on and pushed through till till half time, but even at half time we'd only scored a one and a saying we said it's just too much to ask. They're gonna catch us on the counter. But they had a lot of chances to win the second in the second yeah. leg. Mm. It was a case of the way the first leg went for them, it, the second leg went better for us because they we snuffed out their chances and like we really did take whatever chances came air, air way. It was just it was absolutely phenomenal. But talking about getting through now, it's great. But talking about before, it was just I had like zero zero optimism. I, I knew the fans had torn up early. I knew there'd be a raucous atmosphere, very hostile, but I just didn't see it happen at all whatsoever. I, I remember on the night when the lineups came out, and I remember saying to Ben, I was saying, just I hope we just don't get pasted. I don't want to get beaten six or seven nil and get knocked out by Barcelona because we'll we'll never hear the end of it. So just even if we went out and we got a nil nil or a one nil, at least we've showed up and we've represented ourselves. You know the fact that we didn't have Salah, Salah, the fact that we didn't have Bobby. You know, and it was just kind of like, well, this is going to be uphill. There's no doubt about it. But just lads, go out there and put on a show. Don't embarrass yourselves and don't don't let this be one of these results that fans banter us and quote us for years to come. You know. It was like, yeah, no, I just remember I also said to Ben that night as well. I said, look, if we get an early goal, I said, the likes of Messi and Suarez, when, when you put it up to them and give them a bit of a hiding, they tend to cower down a little bit, you know. And I said to Ben, if we can get about them and give them a bit of a kicking, and if we can get an early goal and keep it tight, I said, anything can happen, you know. And I just remember that first goal with Origi. I just remember Mane breaking in with the ball and the ball falling to Hendo and Hendo running into the box through the players and the ball sort of scuttered off the keeper and out to Origi and Origi just put it away. And when I seen Origi put it away, the first thing I thought was offside. I actually yeah. thought the first thing was offside. Yeah. And then when the goal was given, I just said to Ben, I said, strap yourself in, Ben. Here we go. 
And uh, he said, I oh, would just stop. It's three, one. Sure, they're going to get a goal. I said, Ben, I'm telling you, strap yourself in. I was on my feet for the whole game. I was literally kicked every ball. I nearly threw every throw in. I was screaming at the telly. It was unbelievable. But as you said, we went in a half time and it was three, one. And um, I still sort of thought, you know, if we could come out at half time and get an early goal, you know, because these guys, you know, one, as you said, once and, and like we did give them a bit of a kick in as well, like you know what I mean? Yeah. It was like we got stuck in, you know, and uh, they don't like that. They 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 like to play the ball around and the passing and the world class way that they do. And when you come up against a side like a like we played literally like an old style English side, didn't we? Where you got in and you got stuck in and kicked lads around the pitch. I remember the lads in the middle of the park gave <laughs> the their midfield an awful kick in at times. Um What's your memories of it? I mean, obviously, Robbo off, Janie. And, that, that, I was just going to touch on that. So when the second half was just about to kick off and then the camera went to the sideline and I seen Wijnaldum warm up and I was like, the, I thought our midfield was doing really, really well. And I was like, what? you don't need to change anything at all for the moment. You know, mm. we're on top of them. As you said, we were kicking lumps out of them. Yeah. It was it was it was like one of those England versus Germany games. Yeah. The first 15, 20 minutes, you'd know who was going to be on top because yeah. they'd be they'd be you know the little niggling kicks and the stamping yeah. on three and yeah. what have you. Shakiri, Shakiri was like a pit bull on the night. But he is like a pit bull in general. But yeah. that night it was, like, it was like he took a lot of EPO off Lance Armstrong and he was like, Let's go. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but when I seen when Aldon on the sideline and I was like what I just thought I was like, Dad, what is he doing? And he's like, I've no idea. And I was like, we don't need, especially in the middle of the park, because the, the, the middle of the park with them with bus gets like it was a game of chess in the middle of the park. And I was like, if we take someone there and who's gonna take 10, 15 minutes to get into the game, you're gonna lose your fucking your king. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, there's no need what and then the commentators say Robbo's coming off and I, I just I was like, oh, I don't believe this. And then I was like, why is he taking off Robbo and putting on my now? Jamie, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I was like, I've never, he's a versatile player, but I've never seen him playing left back. Left back, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, it, it's, I don't, I'm not going to say faith and all this kind of stuff, but if Wijnaldum doesn't come on, we don't go through, in my opinion. He changed the game completely when he came mm. on. He, he it, he said it himself afterwards. He was he was disappointed not to play, and I understand why Klopp didn't start him because even though we needed to go all out to to, to get a three 0 four 0 win, you still kind of needed to be reserved in the middle of the park, and that's why he started um, Milner. And uh, yeah, it just from then the the, the fuels on the fireworks were lit. It was just. It was just magical. Um, his little cry torn in the middle of the park with three three Barcelona players. I think the three of them are still actually looking to get the echo from that evening somewhere in Liverpool tonight or uh, today. But it was it was just absolutely you could see for hours. Yeah. Like, the their boots, their boots are still glued to the pitch. <laughs> it was unbelievable. <laughs> oh, but it was it was so amazing. madness, wasn't it? Because I mean. We took off our left back and we put on a midfielder who basically nearly played as a forward. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it was just madness. But like you going back to the four stake that we were talking about how we we love him to take a goal back. When I think about it now, that then barely miss was nearly as good as an away goal to us. Because a three nil, like it's talking about it now, at three, looking back on it now in points like. A 3 nil, you like we think about Istanbul, you know what I mean? We scored three goals in what 10 minutes or something. You have 90 minutes to try it, and it was all about that first goal and setting a precedent in the game. But if, if Dembele scores that goal, it's game over 100 percent But that that was nearly as good as an away an away goal. Because if you listen to players talking about it now, everyone mentions that that had he scored that, it, it was over and done with. But um I get to, I find it hard to talk about because I get so excited. Even though it was it was two years ago, it was like it only happened this week. It was just one it. We're famous for nights like you'd Saint Etienne, you'd Istanbul, you had the Olympiacos game. We could write a book. Liverpool fans could write a book about great nights at Anfield. But that that this one for me was better than Istanbul. I know it wasn't the 
we went on to win the Champions League, but this one for me was was just it was really, really special because I had no hope whatsoever of going through. I, w- I kind of would have been just being happy with getting a 2-0, 2-1, 3-1, 3-2 win, just to just go out with our heads held by it. Just, yeah, look, at the, when they talk about the hair stand-up on me, it's just unbelievable. So then the, the, the two goals from Janie that levelled the game, I mean, the header was sublime into the top corner. It was just an incredible header. And I was thinking... Where did that come from? Where's this guy been hiding? You know what I mean? <laughs> and then the, the other one, the one that went under, kind of went under the keeper's body into the back of the net. And I remember him flying into the net. He basically yeah. followed it in, shoves the keeper on the ground. How he didn't get carded. Grabs the ball <laughs> off the keeper and says, we're up for this now, boys. We have you on the ropes. You're after taking a left and a right and a body shot. And now we have you. And it was three all. And I just remember when I got to three all. I know Messi is a short player, but I've never seen a guy sink into the ground yeah, as much. He was so dejected. And the camera went to Suarez, and Suarez knew what was about to happen because he'd the experienced way, it firsthand. <laughs> you know? The way the way he Suarez, when the camera went to me, the hands on his hip, and he kind of just torn away as if to say, like, can I just get me taxi on and just go now? But you're yeah, talking about when it went three all. Do you remember how so when Origi scored, the place went bananas? When when Alden scores the second goal, the play, it ups about five ten percent. He scores to make a three all, and the way he runs, so he he heads the ball, but then he runs like towards the, that side, but does the U turn back? Yeah, loops back see, around. Yeah, and just the like the depth of a level, like it just lifted up until we get to the. That, yeah. that moment in time, but it lifted. You, it was like someone put a bar on it in the middle of the pitch, and every time we scored, it just went boom, 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 and then yeah. just exploded. And, and, and what a beautiful smile Jeannie Wijnaldum has when he's in full flight and smiling. Jeannie, like and just... I just, Jeannie, you probably never, ever, ever hear of the Dynamo Podcast Network or the Upper Tier. But will you just stay, please? <laughs> yeah, just don't go. <laughs> just, for that, just for your smile alone. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So then we we level it up at three all, and there's kind of um there's an atmosphere, but as you said, the celebrations for the first two goals, but the third goal was was a bigger celebration. But then there was a kind of a oh. It was kind yeah. of like the tension was starting to creep in now. It was kind of like are we going to have this unbelievable moment? And when you think about that second leg, I mean, Messi was basically the equivalent of Mo Salah in terms of the chances that he had. He had some brilliant chances. Allison was unbelievable in some of the blocks he made, um, especially the one where he cut in from the right member and he went to go around him. And Allison put his arm up like that. He was already on the ground and blocked it. Man. So many, Incredible. so many chances they had. I watched the highlights of it. I actually still have that recorded on my me, on me skybox. And, um, we we'll get a chance now. Hopefully, when the when the baby's born, I'm actually going to sit down and watch that whole game with it because I have to build up from when it started. The coverage started not, but um, looking at the chances Barcelona had, like Allison was phenomenal that night when he was called upon. Because when you think about it, they had a lot of chances, but at times Allison was would have been cold, you know, like when because when we got on top of them for 10, 15 minutes. He like there wasn't much for him to do, but then when, when they had the ten or fifteen minutes, they they easily went through us. You know, they they were whiskers wide, but when he was called upon, he was absolutely phenomenal last night. Yeah. Uh, that night there was there was so many um, players that could have been man of the match, but I think Allison was overlooked because of how well Origi done and how well Wayne Alden done when he came on. But for me, Allison that night was was on another level. It's like the demon was inside him. So at a minute 56, we level it up and then we proceed all the way through. There's, there's a bit of back and forth, but but not a huge amount in the game, if you like. And we get to the 70 and ninth minute. The Trent, Trent goes down the side, squeezes out, so we get a corner. And, you know, the commentary from Steve Hunter and John Aldridge. Like, I mean, Steve Hunter will get that inscribed on his headstone one day when he passes away without a shadow of a deal. I just remember Trent, the ball boy, was golden messy all night nearly. Has, he, has, he, has that ball boy signed with a 
a contract to be in the fourth team when he's when he's twenty. Uh, <laughs> I tell you, it was just unbelievable. And I just remember he, 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 the ball going to Trent, and I remember Trent. The, the ball getting put down and Trent pretending to walk away and spotting a Rigi and running back and the ball was hit and it was bent right into a Rigi. Couldn't have been any perfect. And I remember a Rigi hitting it and he didn't even hit it clean. And the ball just sailed into the, the, the top the top corner. And I just remember Rigi, Rigi, the way he turns and runs, similar to Janie, but he's kind of like the braids and all were gone and he was gone. It was just just so cool. And he was on his toes, like, you know. And uh, I just remember Steve Hunter saying, corner taken quickly, Rigi. And that moment, you know, will stay with us forever. Like, it was unbelievable. And I just remember, again, not dissimilar to when we drew, when we got the third, when we got the fourth, just the Barcelona players, I just remember Messi standing there with his hands on his hips and they couldn't believe we had absolutely taken them apart. Like, um, And I just remember run, they were running down to the sideline to celebrate it, you know, and it, it kind of took a Rigi an age to get back to Trent because he was trying to avoid all the players. And I just remember the subs, the ball boy, everyone, there was just a big pile of players um, and I just remember as well Van Dyke as well to Origi coming down and grabbing him and telling him, you know, had him by the head, yeah. by the head like you know what I mean. <laughs> it was just unbelievable. And then I just remember, like, at you know, at full time, we had beaten him 4 0, and just the emotion was incredible. I remember when the, the final whistle went because it, like, no, no, we haven't mentioned the, the tension, the anxiety. Like it was like a pressure cooker because when we scored to make it as you said, when we scored to make it 3 0 and the place just exploded because we we like we were 3 0 down, it's 3 all now. But then I think when we realized that everything had settled on the pitch and the fans had stopped singing, I think everybody realized, well, if they score, we have to score too. You know, like hindsight, yeah. hindsight's a beautiful thing when you think back now and what we call it, we got to the Champions League final and what have you. But when when they scored, when we scored to make it three 0 and like the, the tension in the air, you know, it was it, we you couldn't help but think they're gonna have one more chance. They're gonna have one more chance. But they they getting onto the corner. I've never seen a more slow slow motion play in football history, and I don't think I ever will, because when. Trent started to walk away. First of all, I didn't even notice the ball by throwing him the ball. Because when he got down the boy line and I was like, whip it, whip it, whip it. Because we were really, really pushing for I, I think the yeah. players had, were, were just drawn mentally and physically that they were thinking we need to get this over and done with. We, like, we don't don't want to get extra time. But when when he, Trent went down the wing and he, he, he went to kick it and then he kind of just knocked it on a spawn a bit more and then he, he kicked it off I think it was off Alabama and it went out the corner and I just kind of took a, like a, a few seconds to like just right, settle, get the corner and then when I look up he's running back to kick it and as you said Stephen was like corner taken quickly but even as he says corner taken quickly it's just like a quick corner like yeah. he didn't even know where it was going and then it gets to Origi if Origi hits that clean it's probably going into fucking it's probably going to land in Goodison or it's going to fucking kill someone in Rose Red of the Cup, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's shindy. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it, I swear to God, like, if you could hit, feel the hairs on the back of my neck. Yeah. I, I, thought, I thought it was madness when we scored that, the winner against Dortmund in Anfield that night in the Europa League. Watching Lovren fucking jump in the air thinking that when he lands, he's going to jar his knee in the ground and ruin his career. Lovren was the first person to celebrate with Rigi. He was that quick down to the corner. And then everyone bombs in. And then the camera hands to Alison. I think Alison is on his knees like, what's, what's just happened? Yeah. Klopp, the camera then goes to Klopp, who has Ben Woodbourne in the headlock. Like, what happened, mate? <laughs> Everything was just... I'd, I'd, I'd say there's people in the stadium who didn't even see the ball going in and are like, fucking hell, I've missed that. Yeah. Because nobody... Everybody seen Shakiri running over the like coming across the take and he wasn't in a hurry to take it. Yeah. And everybody like because I took a few seconds to reset before we took the corner. 
the majority of that stadium didn't even see the ball going in because they were like, what the fuck? Because if you watch it back now and listen to the, as the ball goes to Rigi, you can hear the, the whole crowd collectively going, <gasps> yeah. And then it goes yeah. in and everyone's like, yeah. It was like it was it was like as if the cops sucked the ball into the net, really, wasn't it? And it was kind of like, and then I was kind of thinking, the ref's hardly gonna not make him retake that, is he? You know what I mean? So there was kind of like, and then then you come to the realization, the ref's given it, he's after doing this. This is unbelievable. Because you know? I'm not sure the noise was that 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 crazy. I'm not sure the ref blew his whistle or what have you, but like. At, at the end of the day, if you don't take these chances, you've seen, like, remember back in the day, you've seen, like, the keeper about to throw them for the kick out and Robbie Kane coming out and knocking out of his hands. There's moments and times you need to take a risk. And, like, Trent, you know, if he does nothing else for the rest of his career, like, he'll always be applauded for having been switched on for that because every one of Barcelona's players was in the box that night for that, for that corner, you know what I mean? And, to, all, and all switched off. Yeah, to, because most of them are facing away from the goal. Yeah, yeah. And so the for, ball. For Trent, for a kid in that situation to, to be switched on, because if that was me personally, if I'm jogging away and seeing another person coming over to take it, who's going to presumably left foot whip it in on top of the keeper, I'm probably thinking to myself, Roy, I'll reset, I'll sit on the edge of the box. The two big centre halves are going forward. As I said, hindsight's a beautiful thing, but like thinking back now, there's so many different things that could have that could have been like in the team selection. Shakiri could have came over and took that. Everything was like a jigsaw puzzle that was just put into place. And then there was the, the laminate put over it and it was just set in stone. Someone had to be watching over us that night because it was just one of those nights that I'm going to tell me son, my son's due in six weeks. When he's old enough to understand, I'm going to sit and watch that game with him. That's something that, like, that live on in folklore in Liverpool history. That's something that people should tell their great, great gang, grandkids about because, for me, only Liverpool football club right nights like that. And it was only fitting that the Scouse lad would take the corner, isn't it? One of their own, you know what I mean? It was, it was, like, it was, it was written like... The, the scenes at the end of it, I remember when they were singing and never walked alone and Salah steps out in front yeah. of everyone and was like, never give up. Yeah. And I was bawling my eyes out. Yeah. Like, I have the chills now. I mean, yeah. dad, my dad is an old school man's man. No emotion unless it's someone touch wood, unless it's a, a family bereavement or something like that. I'm sitting there crying and I'm waiting on him to turn around and say, fucking grow up. And I look over at him and he's tears in his eyes. And I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm just looking at him and like, did this really happen? Do you yeah, know what I mean? I, I remember Klopp's glasses were sideways and I remember he'd run out onto the pitch and the glasses yeah, had gone no, everywhere. And, it was absolutely yeah. phenomenal. And then it was like, it was, it was such a mad week, wasn't it, for Champions League football? Because the next night then we had, you know, we had Ajax and, and Spurs and, and what a game that was. Um, yeah, it didn't upstage us, but it did its very best to try. Um, with Lucas Moore and all, it was unbelievable. But it was, it was, it was just another one of those special nights at Anfield. Up, just, up touching on, just touching on the sports game, only a pro boy of sports fan who really, really hates Liverpool will say that their comeback was better than theirs. I'm not being biased being a Liverpool fan, but you put any other team in that situation that's three 0 down against Barcelona. Who were flying high? Who had won the league? Who had the the had the option of resting their whole star in eleven? Came out fresh to face us. We were missing Salah. We were missing Bobby. Robbo taking off at half time. Like everything stacked against us. Like you, you try and put any other team in that situation with a full strength team. I don't see it happening. I'm not, as I said, I'm not being biased being a Liverpool fan, but I just do not see it happening. You, Liverpool, you're going to get fans watching this and saying, oh, he's a Liverpool fan. He's only saying it's Liverpool. When we get going, when we get simmering, there's no stopping us. Yeah, true. And and I suppose when you look back on it, maybe if we had a, had a full team, <laughs> we, may not have, we may not have done it. Like. <laughs> well, I was going to ask you that. I was like, if I know, like we'll never ever know. But if Salah starts, if Bobby plays, if Robbo doesn't come off injured, 
do you see the same result? We'll never know. That's the beauty, know. that's the beauty of football. Know. We'll never know. <laughs> but um <laughs> it's one time where we won't complain about players missing and players getting injured. Uh, we'll embrace it. <laughs> you know, it was I, just... sit, I, sit, I sit here and I criticize, I criticize Shirigi for uh, Shirigi. That's a nice little Shakiri and Origi. Yeah, yeah. Shirigi. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, I criticize Shakiri for his for his hunger lately, and I. I've criticised the Regi a lot because other than his like little his goal against Everton, his Champions League final goals, two goals against Barcelona, you know, he hasn't done enough for me. But and the new and know, the new and the Newcastle goal. But people talk yeah. about the old cult hero status, and for that night alone, they'll they'll forever be cult heroes with, with Liverpool. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I suppose. As always, head over to YouTube, the Dynamo Podcast Network. Smash that subscribe and bell notification button. Anchor for audio versus show. But there's only really one way to finish off this episode, and it's with a little audio soundbite of one Steve Hunter and one John Aldrich. So until next time, we'll leave you with this. And this has been your Champions League look back at that famous night, the 4-0 win against Barcelona at Anfield. Henderson's in the box. Henderson saved him. Yes! Devo Kabiki. Would you believe it? Oh, Alexander Arnold beats that. Albert on the right hand side. No one in the Harry Mane in the box. Trent's cross. Vinaldo. Yes! Yes! Gini Vinaldo. Yes! Yes! It's another assist for Trent Alexander Arnold. Anfield absolutely erupts. 2-0. Shakiri at the back post has just gone outside the box. Liverpool keep it going. Just the the box, guys. Good delivery. Milner from the left. Lovely reverse Good ball. Delivery. Shakiri on the left. What a Brilliant ball. cross. <laughs> Final! Oh! Again to Alexander Arnold. Up against Sergio Roberto. Still Alexander Arnold. Yep, corner well done, Sean. Well done. Done really well, Trent. Yeah, well done. 12 minutes to go in normal time. Liverpool 3-0. Corner take it quickly. Origi! Yeah! Yeah!